to a million and one issues with my laptop. A bit late, I know, but here we are. Attack on Titan, the final season, part 2, episode 5. Or overall, I believe, episode 80 for the entire anime. So, I've seen thumbnails in terms of where this episode is going to end. And I'm looking forward... I'm really looking forward to seeing how they handle it. Honestly. So. It's time. It's time. The rumbling is coming. <laughs> Hope you guys are having an awesome day. Of course, leave your thoughts about this episode. Leave a like, of course, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz and blues. Of course, just fear announcement. Well, not announcement. I mean, this is public knowledge, at least on this channel. I am a manga reader, so again, just looking forward to seeing how they actually handle this episode. Anyway, let's get into it. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. All right. Yeah. This seems really easy for Grisham, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Did you fought? Mm -hmm. E. It seems like that that give me hope that the censorship during the rumbling won't be <laughs> won't be a problem. And here we are, back in the paths. We have the true villain, Eren Yeager, being that 4D chess master. <laughs> just, just a little commentary here. You know, I've been thinking about it, and I honestly, even though Eren sent back memories to Grisha, I don't think it's at this point is... I don't think this is the point where he sent back the memories. Um, well, since most of you who are watching this are already, you know, I would imagine I've watched the episode already. Yeah, I imagine it's actually when he got the full power of the founder. Like, during the rumbling is when he actually sent the memories back. Because I think when he was surprised that Zeke... Um, when Grisha could see Zeke, he was surprised. I think he just came to the realization that he just needed to hurry things up to the memory of Grisha trying to kill the family. You know, do what he needed to do to motivate him. And, you know, get secure that memory so when he gets the found, the founder he can send that memory back so i think it's more along the lines of that if i'm being honest yeah it, you know this is so trippy because this is one big time loop which is why he says it's only possible because he brought him into the memories Yo, the voice actor putting in the work, brother. Ooh. I guess it helps that, you know, as a shifter, he has pain tolerance from, you know, the biting himself all the while. So, yeah. <laughs> from you 2,000 years ago. Of course, for those of you who are maybe anime only, you can, you know, go back and look at the title of episode one. Far away in a distant land. I, Ymir. Well, she's not the shape-shifting master of darkness now, is she? <laughs> People them say, you will not lose an eye. Ooh. A bit of CG there. Run, Ymir, run. Ooh, shit. Ooh, interesting. They actually put that flower there. Ooh, all right. So that's an interesting. Um, like I didn't really know what to expect. They make the, the whole centipede creature look like. Like the rough part about all of this, that as a slave, she went back. Granted, I mean, I know why, but no spoilers, but still. The Great King Fritz. Monzo, yo! <laughs> Pats, man. Pats! Working, working, working. So, I mean, I think this is like the freaked up part about it as well. When you realize that due to how time 
the time difference between like in the past versus in the real world, like it being an instant in the real world versus it taking like potentially years in the past. So if what Zeke theorizes is right, where you know every time they call on the power of the th- the Titans, like if she just builds the bodies then she's just been slaving away for like probably hundreds and hundreds of years more than likely. Like, the, the, the... I, you know what, let me not just, let me not, cause that, that involves me getting into the ending too much. <laughs> Let's just continue to watch. Yo. It's like very interesting visually looking at the, the, the Titan centipede. Yo. Here we go. The walls are crumbling. The skies are red. There we go. The colossal Titans. Yo! Well done, eh? Information via report disclosure version of Titans. According to legend, the founder Yumira obtained the power of the Titans when it came into contact with something. For generations, her blood and power were passed down by aliens. However, the identity of that something which began it all remains unknown. It may have been some type of pathogenic parasite, a god who pitied the founder Yumira and gave her power, or something else entirely. Yo, Doug, it feels insane to know that we are actually here, the rumbling, <laughs> and I guess person's worries about the CG being potentially bad, mm-mm. you can get a real sense of skill from this. Yo, here we go. We turn up this volume. Oh shit, they actually showed Historia, nice! Yo! Alright, the only thing though, I'm a bit disappointed that they didn't like use some voice effects to alter Eren's voice in that last um, part there because... Come on! All right, so attack on Titan, <laughs> yo, the rumbling has begun. Ah, as I was saying at the end of the reaction portion there, I'm a bit disappointed that they didn't use like some voice effects because I want it to be like this menacingly. I mean, visually speaking, that face of Eren at the end there, definitely menacing, definitely creepy. But I, I wanted them to add the voice, you know, to really sell the whole book, I guess, the, <laughs> the boogeyman effect, um, for lack of a better term. But yo, all in all, still a pretty damn good episode, if I do say so myself. Of course, this episode, we focus on the origins, or at least, yeah, for the most part, of the founder, Ymir. And we saw, for the most part, how she was a slave whose village was actually... You know, taken over and pillaged and everything by King Fritz, the original one, of course. And how she essentially got the power of the, the Titans, essentially. Now, of course, I know the most confusing part is that she got the power of the Titans and still decided to serve King Fritz. Which is something which will be explored in greater detail, quote-unquote, later on, well, 
if the season does manage to finish the entire story if it's more than 12 episodes then yeah you'll get it later on in the series or at least any further adaptation um depending on when they do it i'm just saying just kind of throwing some you know some shit at the fact that you know maybe they might do a movie who knows because if it's 12 episodes they definitely can't cover everything but it is what it is but that aside i did as i said enjoy this episode the you know i did love the backstory with um yumir of course even the i thought it was an interesting artistic decision even from the perspective of the manga because this is more or less one-to-one -one with the manga from what i can remember the only difference that really stands out to me is that scene of historia within the past i don't recall seeing her in the chapter so yeah but anyway yeah so there was that um but yeah it was an interesting artistic decision from isayama to keep the eyes shaded and just the contrast between keeping the eyes shaded and you know yumir who finally they finally show her eyes her pupils and everything when erin gives her the speech and thing um i thought that was a nice symbolic meaning of like yumir compared to everybody from her time till now she's the one that's i guess symbolically broken free of everything that you know that king fritz has built up until now i think that's a nice symbolic comparison if i do say so <laughs> if, if i'm not drawing a trout here and just you know chatting foolishness but that was an interesting um you know visual cue from isayama now erin in terms of the possibility of it being Ymir who actually was crying out for help, as Eren kind of implied, he's wondering if Ymir is the one that actually led him here. Um, I mean, possibly. <laughs> possibly. <sighs> At the end of the day, I don't want to dive too deep into it because it feels like I'll be getting into spoiler territory for the end of the manga. Even though probably some persons might can make some, probably can make some educated guesses in terms of what really went on in Ymir's head but it is what it is and if and real i mean is erin really and truly the one yumir was waiting on <laughs> i won't say i won't spoil but yo i'm not gonna lie one of the concerns i think generally speaking across the board going into this final season especially based on how the colossal titan was handled visually speaking in you know seasons what, three I think a lot of persons were kind of curious how they'd handle the rumbling in terms of the visual aspect of it in terms of the colossal titans would it be like a cgi fist and considering that you know mafa seemed like they were stressed and overworked with everything they had to do it would be anybody's guess if they had really managed to really pull off you know that high visual fidelity of you know having the colossal titans looking really good and thing but yo i am thoroughly impressed with how they've actually done it like they look they look good you know i mean and um, between the the color of the skies and the size of erin's founding type well founding attack titan if i can call it that there's a incredible sense of skill between the the colossal titans and erin it's it just and of course, between that and the music, like, it really feels like Doomsday. <laughs> As he said, he plans to wipe out everyone beyond the island. But this is a moment we'll have to look back at in further discussions because it's at this moment. The only thing I'll slightly... Well, okay, I'm not going to spoil. But things, something has changed that hasn't been showcased just yet. Something has changed with how things are progressing in Eren's head. That's all I'll see. <laughs> um, I'm just hoping the anime does a better job of the manga of kind of patching out things in the ending because everything that's going on now is going to have to be referenced in great detail when analyzing the ending. So it is what it is. But all in all, great, excellent episode. Loved it, honestly. Um, Jano. But again, the one disappointment, I wanted a more creepy voice effect for Eren in the end there. <laughs> but it is what it is. Sanjay Uchiha, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next... Well, well, I'll see you in the rumbling. <laughs>